So it's time to start off where we left off in part one. If you haven't watched part one of this concrete pour, make sure to go ahead and do that first. But for everybody who's up to speed, we've got it poured, we've got it screeded, and we've got it bull floated. Now it's on to the finishing process. So as soon as this floor was hard enough for the guys to get out on it without sinking down to the grade, they did. And then they started working it, hand troweling it, doing the edges in preparation to get the power trowel out on there. So because you can only get so close to the edges with the power screen, a lot of the edge work has to be done by hand. And this is just stage one of a few that they went through about working the edges. And from the best of my understanding, they're just working up the surface of this concrete maybe to help it start setting up a little faster than it would if they did nothing at all. Along with getting some of the rougher spots out, you know, so they don't have to worry about them later. So when it comes to finishing concrete, a slick finish is a lot more labor intensive than a broomed finish. But a slick finish is also a lot easier to keep clean, a lot easier to sweep, a lot easier to mop if you ever plan to do that to the to the concrete than the than the broomed finish. A slick finish costs more, but there's a reason for that and that is it takes a lot longer to get the concrete to where it's nice and flat and slick than it does just to you know, run a broom over it at the right time and you know, rough it up a bit. So they were pretty particular about when they first put this power trowel out on the surface of the concrete. It has to be you know, a certain stiffness in order for this thing not to sink and just make just make more work for you uh, for finishing. So, you know, when they brought it on there, how they used it on the surface, it was all, you know, it was all choreographed and thought out, of course. You know, it's not just set this machine on there and randomly, you know, go over to the sur over the surface until it smooths out. There was a, definitely a lot more to it than that, and it was a learning experience to watch them run this machine and and the process that they did in order to get it to a good finish. So because there were two different pours here, you can see the line right there where they stopped uh, with the power trowel you know, at the first, because this front section was poured later, it's softer than the back section. So they had to work this thing you know, in stages, right? They'd go over the power trail where they could, right? Because you don't want to get on it too late, but also you don't want to get on it too early. So really, they had to work this in a way that, like it was two different pads. Although, you know, towards the end, they caught up with each other, but it was a time and dance. Watching the way Daniel ran this power trail was pretty interesting. He would make a pass, overlap that pass, by about 50% on the machine. He would work in one direction, then he would alternate and work in the other direction. Work lengthwise and then widthwise. So it was you know, not as simple as one would think. I'll just put it that way. So they would set this machine on there, they would go over the surface, then they would wait, sometimes you know, up to 45 minutes before they put the machine back on there, and it would just progressively get smoother and smoother each time that they did it. You know, it was an interesting thing to watch. I can't imagine trying to do this uh, entire floor with a hand trowel. You know, the power trowel definitely probably the only way to go for a slick finish anyway, but it was neat the way that it worked out. I definitely learned why a slick finish is much more expensive than a broomed finish.
So it's the next day right before the sun comes up, right? Got a nice new floor in here. They did a fantastic job on it, although it's not finished yet. We still got to saw cut it, put the relief joints in it so that if it cracks or when it cracks, it cracks in, in our joints and not just diagonal across the floor. And it's also got to be sealed, which I'll be doing on my own. That'll be a day or so from now. But it looks amazing. They really did spend a lot of time to get this as flat and as smooth as what it is. 14 hours from start to finish, from the time we open the doors in the morning to the time that we close the doors at night, it was 14 hours to get this to the point that it's at. And, you know, there's a lot of factors as to why it took that long. Um, one is that the temperature is just cold and you work on the concrete schedule, right? When it starts setting up and when it's done, it's done. When you can get a finish on it, that's when you work it. So 14 hours and those guys did an amazing job. I couldn't be happier with this thing. So I can't wait to get it cut and sealed and start moving my equipment over on it. Look at it, looks, looks really good. Like all that, the two kind of brooms got the inside outside, like all the outside. Let me raise this up. Uh, did that end up catching on fire? <laughs> I'll raise this up and back up a little bit back up here. So this floor will never be any cleaner than it is right now. It'll never have less stuff on it than what it's got on it, right? There's nothing to in the way. So 
I'm going to mop this to get all the loose dust and dirt out of all the little holes and pockets that are left in the floor. And then I'm going to seal this in order to protect the floor from any oil, grease, whatever I get on it in the future. If I seal it now, then it'll be nice and easy to clean and it'll look better for a very long time. So that looks really good. My second coat of sealer did not lay down near as good as the first coat. I think the floor temperature was a little cooler than what it should have been. And I got a, quite a bit of orange peel in that uh, sealer on that second time around. But it looks great, to be honest. And the only reason I sealed it at all is just to keep, that, uh, keep oil and stuff underneath machines from soaking into the concrete and making those permanent big black stains wherever they sit. With this stuff, it just goes ahead and fills up all those pores and allows you to pretty much wipe up oil without it soaking into the concrete. You know, I'm not one of those guys that is going to spit shine their floor. That's that's not who I am. Uh, in fact, I plan to scratch the daylights out of this thing in the very near future, uh, moving all of my equipment around. Uh, I'm excited to actually get to do that. It looks great. Uh, it turned out better than I expected that it would. And, uh, you know, now it's time to start moving my stuff around. I've been waiting on for a very long time. So the first footprints, really. Hopefully those aren't forever. Uh, I'm not real good at letting paint dry, but it's good enough. So I sealed this concrete the day after it was poured, and then the temperature just plummeted uh, for us in this area. And I kept heat in here, kept the temperature about 40 degrees, 45 degrees in the shop for the next few days because it was just brutal cold outside but, you know glad we poured this concrete when we did
So it's Christmas Day for me, literally, and it feels like that. To have this project at the point where it's at feels like a huge accomplishment, and it's a weight off my shoulders knowing that now the roof's done, the wall's done, you know, it's got a good foundation, got the floor done, and now it's on to the smaller stuff, which feels great. Obviously, I've got some heaters running in the background. I've got to keep the temperatures in here above freezing because it's like 15 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and if you're not up on that, Fahrenheit. That equals cold. All right, well below freezing. So it's about 40 to 45 degrees in here, which is perfectly fine, right? We just want to keep this floor from freezing. Little electric heater in front of the door because that's probably where it's most likely to you know, get damaged and a piece of foam. And then obviously the noisemaker salamander heater blowing to keep the temperatures up in here a bit. So to get to this point, it's felt like it's taken forever. And for one guy working on this after work, you know, it has taken forever, right? This has been a huge project. And when I started on this thing, taking down that first block, I knew that I was on a path that I couldn't stop from that point on until I got to a point like this. Now, all the major things are done, right? I can take a break if I want to. I can work on something else. Nothing is pressing, you know, other than the ceiling. I gotta get that done got to be able to heat this place or get some heat in here, right? You might as well blow that thing out the door at right now. But some insulation and some some sort of sealant, get my lights arranged and start cleaning stuff because it feels good to be able to actually wipe something off and it mattered. Because before, there was so much dirt, so much dust in that construction environment that it was just a waste of time to wipe anything off. And it feels good to now be cleaning things that arranging things in the place that they're probably going to be for a very long time instead of moving them because of one project or one stage of the project to the next. You get the idea. It feels good. And I want to say a huge thanks to anybody who's helped me get to this point. Now I'm not done for those who love the construction project. I've still got a lot to go. But yet now we can try to mix things up a bit, which feels good. And uh, I'm excited. I can't even... I can't even portray how excited I am. It's great. It's a huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project. It means a ton. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, you guys are amazing. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. The huge block of the sand Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know the biggest uh, gathering of them I've ever seen. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own, waiting for the sun to blossom. to pray
Thanks for 